morning everybody first match day of the nations league uh, not match day first day of the nations league is in the books and yeah i only saw one game and highlights of a few other games the one game that i saw was probably one of the <laughs> worst ones and almost i think most people who can choose Traffic jam on the mountain road. <laughs> uh, would have watched Germany against France. Yeah. I think after about 10 50 minutes, I said to myself, there's not much happening. This looks like a 0 0. So it did. Uh, it was not a straightforward 0 0, but the game very quickly had 0 0 written all over it. Uh, I think Germany, and it's funny uh, how those things happen. Germany did have nothing of the self-assurance that they had. This World Cup completely damaged them. I thought they had most of the possession. They tried to play forward a little bit, but it was very, you didn't know really uh, or you could see that there was no confidence there and France was happy to sit back and get a draw I mean a draw in Germany that's a good result and yeah we know that the French forte is clearly the defense and that's why uh, the game went as it, as it went um, the first 30 minutes, I would say, were entirely forgettable. Then, I think there was a quick, a slight German chance, and then the France actually looked and more dangerous. Uh, you always had the feeling going forward, the French players, there is a certain self-assurance to them. They are technically more gifted. I mean, Mbappé, I think, made this crazy flick. Uh, with his uh, back heel to get past the German defender didn't go far but yeah this was more or less for a long time the highlight of the first half and then yeah there were some missed opportunities half chances for France I think one I remember now by Giroud that did something um, but yeah there wasn't it was not that uh, it screamed a goal is about to get scored. Second half started similarly with France, yeah, having a little bit more control. Uh, actually, now starting to play a little bit forward, but it was always a little bit more counter attacking. Griezmann had his personal, um, how to say, employment program for Manuel Neuer by shooting on goal and, and forcing saves from Neuer. Um, but honestly, um, nothing that seemed, yeah, a goal needs to be there. Up until the 70th minute. Suddenly, um, I think it, it was a chance by Hummers that was saved by the French goalkeeper, the only player that did not play in the World Cup final. And uh, his name Arbeola, something like that. Uh, sorry. I'm really bad with names. I mean, I'm getting more into it because I, I'm starting to watch a lot of soccer again, so maybe some names will stick, but I'm sorry. Uh, I was surprised that Yoris did not play, but I yeah, seemingly uh, had an injury. So, yeah. Uh, and then Germany so oh yeah the, the chance was he saved it and it went that far I mean it was I think a header out to goal if it's Hummels it could have been a header you see how not memorable the game was uh, in a way and he saved it but not it was not a clear save so it's kind of you know if the goal is here header was like that and then whoop, went just just past the post could have been one nothing, and then yeah, then Germany had uh, two or three more chances. I think it was almost it was Müller who had I think a double or triple chance, 
to score uh, in that point I really thought yep yeah, Germany probably if they win this one it would not be undeserved and really between the around the 70th to the 80th minute they had 10 minutes where they completely dominated France and France never dominated Germany that, uh, that much they were maybe a little bit better going forward but suddenly Germany found its uh, footing but yeah the last 10 minutes again the same as we had before not much happening and uh, yeah Germany and France tied in a goal is strong a little bit disappointing um, if you think about it, I never expected a great game out of that one uh, to be honest I, I'm a little bit mad at myself that I didn't switch games um, but you know you're gonna stick with what world you chose uh, and you know if the thing is I probably I didn't ever think about it but uh, if I had the chance to get to that game I probably have paid money to go for that game and because you know when do we see the reigning world champion play the previous world champion not too often so uh, simply for that alone I would have gone um, but it's exactly that type of game where you have high expectations because the names and the stars are all there and the game does just doesn't live up to the billing and very often those uh, big name clashes don't live up to the billing but if you think about it Germany as I said confidence was missing after this World Cup and uh, almost too much turmoil in the German camp I gotta be honest I don't think it's, it's all fair yes they played a horrible World Cup yes they made mistakes but um, you know mistakes are there to learn not to tear everything apart and I sometimes have the feeling that uh, the Germans are losing their head a little uh, in that regard yeah and we also know that France is placed defensively super sound so there was never a goal fest in store that's what I like to say what remains is jer uh, jersey or kit matchup um, let's start with the France jersey first I was very happy to see that the World Cup winners badge was centered I also found it interesting how the Federation logo for France which was shown in the stands um, now has the two stars uh, there was only you know it's this hexagon where on top there was one star and now they made um, and kind of integrated within the logo but now there's two separate logos which actually makes for a much cleaner look I have to say um, I know that they had it in the stands uh, um, in the tunnel they had I think the correct logo I'm not sure if they had it in the stands on the board uh, I saw it uh, and I thought they used the old logo but I might have been wrong uh, it would be un-German if it was wrong but you know I didn't look at it closely uh, as I said the World Cup winners badge was centered so that looked nice of course put the numbers below and it really looks uh, okay so it's you know it the right side is a little bit too heavy but yeah and of course they played how they played in the World Cup final in all blue I don't like that look uh, and I don't like that also Germany played in all white although that looked a little bit better although that jersey without the World Cup winners badge 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 however uh, both works and both sound very similar this is the one thing uh, when I got in I think it's leaf patch but this is a badge uh, but I didn't know the name patch when I went to London in the early 2000s and I remember that I wanted to get the Premier League patches and I said Premier League badges but it worked because it's the same it's badge patch it's very very similar in pronunciation so yeah um, that worked for me no Germany without without it the jersey looks really boring this was uh, I underestimate how much color gets lost by just losing the gold it's really staggering uh, it's not a good or nice jersey anymore honestly it's that it's weird I mean it was never that nice of a jersey because I think uh, taking just uh, the gray 
color gradient for the German watch with the German flag. I still maintain if this would have been in black, red, and yellow, I think this could have been a decent looking good jersey. And I'm not so fond of the German flag, but this could have looked better. And then the plane all white. Um, it's a weird it's weird to see Germany all white, but actually, actually it doesn't look as bad. I think Germany all white is a very clean look. Uh, I don't like France in all blue uh, for some reason because uh, France really, there should be some red and uh, kit uh, better. There should be some red and there was none, and that bugged me honestly. So um, that was a little of a downer, uh, and I don't, I don't quite understand because I think if uh, Germany plays in their traditional kit with black pants. France can play with white and uh, with red socks. Maybe because the France kit is so dark, maybe that's why they didn't. They wanted to avoid a weird clash of colors. That could be the reason behind it all. Um, still, France could have played with red socks. I maintain. I remain on that point very clearly. So, I think I talked way too much about. Germany against France, but yeah, this was the big matchup. Uh, other matches, I saw the highlights. Um, I saw a little bit of Slovenia against uh, Bulgaria. Uh, I started out having both games on, one on the big one on TV and the other one on my phone. But yeah, I saw the first Bulgarian goal live. But other than that, I saw that I cannot concentrate anymore on two games at once, especially if you have to have the phone here and then the other one there. Uh, no, it didn't, didn't work. There were times when I could watch five games at once. Uh, I really just wanted to, I think I was too tired to do that. It takes a lot of mental energy to watch uh, many games at once. I can remember that when I was still living in America, uh, ESPN, you, you could pick up to four games in a split screen, which I did a few times, especially when there was an international break. And uh, in addition, I could get the live stream of the Austria game. So I had two screens, one with four games at once, and the other one, that was the fifth one, which was an Austria game. Crazy times. Uh, did not choose to watch the Austria against Sweden game, Austria won to nothing. Back to Bulgaria, Slovenia. So Bulgaria got an early lead. And then I didn't see much from what I could gather from the highlights. And that's League C. I'm gonna get to League B in a second. Uh, all I could get it from the highlights. Slovenia got an equalizer. Bulgaria kind of was always a, a, a bit more assured team. Um, but yeah, Slovenia got the equalizer. Second half was kind of plodding, and then um, an attack by Bulgaria, where the Slovenian goalkeeper made a mess out of a safe, and the Bulgarian Bulgaria striker had a clear shot on goal empty net, made it 2-1, could have made it 3-1 a little bit later and Bulgaria got the first away victory. Why am I so much for Bulgaria? Um, well, family. Family. I have family in Bulgaria, so my wife's from yeah. So that was for me the only other choice actually to watch, although when I look at the matchups, there were two in Group B. Uh, League B that were really interesting. Uh, let's go with a little bit less interesting and save the highlight for the rest. There was of course the Czech Republic against Ukraine. Um, we will look at the jerseys. Ah uh, yeah, the Slovenia and Bulgaria jerseys. I think this Slo new Slovenia look with the light blue is smart and with of course the Tveglav mountain on top should be there. That looked nice. I actually like the Bulgaria jersey a lot. I have to see if I can find a better version. Uh, Czech Republic against um, Ukraine. Uh, also, let's start with the jersey matchup. I like the Czech home jersey. Uh, when we look at it, it has this really nice uh, lion on it. I actually like that they're playing uh, with blue pants. I think this is a look that is very underrated. Uh, at the moment, I don't know many teams to play with the red shirt and blue pants, especially on national team level. So the Czechs really should make this theirs. I think it fits.
fits in quite well. It's better than having white or just an all red kit. Uh, and Ukraine played in all yellow. Um, I think it was a very plain shirt, one that I could not find yet. So that's that was another reason why I have not done a League B video. I will try to do one tonight. Uh, as for the game, the Czechs got an early lead through Schick. I remember the name. Sorry, I didn't. I know Konoplyanka and whoever played for the Ukraine, but I don't know. I don't know who got the goals. I just saw the highlights. Uh, Ukraine equalized, uh, and then. It looked like a stalemate. They had good chances. I think the Czechs were kind of packed back by the Ukra Ukrainians. And in the end, yeah. In the last minute, um, error in defense. Ball goes right to the feet of the Ukrainian striker. Empty net goal in the 93rd minute for a 2 1 win. Uh, yeah, I think Ukraine always looked to be the strongest side in that group, although I think it's the. Slovaks that are seated highest there. I cannot check, check on that, but I, I always had the feeling that Ukraine is probably the most assured in that group. Although the group, although all Eastern Euro European is an interesting one because uh, they are all kind of together. I think uh, Slovakia has a border with Ukraine, so that fits together. And then, of course, uh, Slovakia against the Czechs, against Czechia, as we can say now. It was the Czech Republic, and they made it to Czechia, which I'm very happy about, uh, in English at least. So yeah, um, it was a good win. I really need to have a close look at the Ukraine shirt. I really think it was just a very, very plain yellow with not much to it. There might have been some blue strapping on the side. And then the big one, of course. Uh, I think this was, when I looked at the matchups uh, in the Nations League, the one that really stood out uh, after Germany France. It was of course Wales against Ireland. Um, they met already in World Cup qualifying uh, before, uh, just last year. And yeah, when two teams from the British Isles meet, um, it's usually very, the atmosphere is great. Soccer not always, but you see usually a fighting game. Well, there was not too much fight in that one, although it was Ryan Giggs' first game in charge. Uh, there was uh, and he used a lot of young players. They actually really dominated Ireland. Uh, it was 3 0 at halftime when they got two early goals. The second one by Bale was a beauty. Uh, I don't want to say a typical Bale goal, but you know, a goal of a great player. Uh, just shot outside of the box into the corner. Um, yeah, what more do you want? Also, the pass to him reminded me slightly reminiscent, slightly re reminiscent of Frank de Boer's pass to Bergkamp in the quarters of 98. Very good pass directly on the chest and uh, bailed in the rest. 3 0 up, it got 4 0, and then in the end, uh, a defensive uh, mistake gave. Ireland the consolation goal, but yeah, 4-1, that was surprising to me, uh, but yeah, Wales on its day is a really, really good team, and that's what they shot, uh, not more, not less, so yeah, uh, was surprising, I actually like the jersey matchup, um, especially the Irish kit, weirdly enough, uh, <laughs> I like the white with the green shoulders. That really looked nice. That was a really, really nice kit. Uh, Wales in all red, I think is is a classic. I sometimes wish that Wales has not only red with white accents, but there's, there's a little bit green mixed in there as well. Especially since the Welsh flag is white and green, and then you know you get the, with the red dragon. I understand it's the red jersey. Uh, that everyone's talking about, but I think a little bit more green would do them, would suit them well. Let's put it that way. You could do it like um, France or Belgium do with uh, three stripes in two different colors. I think that could look nice. So have a little bit of a green trim that would make it on the collar or somewhere. Just a thought. But yeah, I think the Welsh kit looks overall okay. I know. 
I'm focusing maybe too much on videos at the moment because I want to get started. But I think I have to go back to writing because a national team jersey I really want to keep on my blog writing about these and maybe I get some time and I'll write some more. And maybe, yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, so that was the big result 4 1 for Wales against Ireland. And yeah, I saw highlights of Kazakhstan against Georgia. Uh, I gotta give it the Kazakhstan home kit looked nice. It's almost a custom made Adidas jersey uh, with slightly offset but uh, blue pinstripes. Really like that one. So yeah, uh, ended 2 nothing for Georgia. Um, Kazakhstan had their chances, Georgia got late goals. Uh, another one that I saw highlights just because I could is Armenia against Liechtenstein. Um, and if you think about it, yeah, this should be all Armenia. And it was, but the goalkeeper for Liechtenstein put up a big fight. I mean, he made save after save. It probably was the performance of the evening, almost. Uh, pulled out a great save after great save. And that's the thing about Liechtenstein. They're one of those minnows that actually are sound defensively, at least. And yeah, they got an equalizer uh, after Armenia got, and then Armenia was pressing and pressing, didn't get the goal, they even got the penalty that was saved beautifully. Outstretched arm high by the goalkeeper. Um, I think Liechtenstein, for, just for that, should have deserved a draw, but yeah, Armenia got the winner uh, late. It was, you know, it's one of those dolls, so I cannot say it's undeserved. But the fight that Liechtenstein put up, they would have deserved a draw, but overall I think the result is fine. I didn't see any other highlights. Uh, they were all again, all minnows playing against each other, but I might watch them because I'm a freak. But yeah, I also wanted, uh, I also need to watch a little bit of the NFL, which started yesterday, Philadelphia playing at home to, uh, against Atlanta. The NFL is another thing that's a real passion of mine. So, yeah, looking forward to the NFL season, especially in, in fall. Uh, I actually like watching in the evening the NFL because uh, I think it's. Uh, I've got a tractor ahead of me. I like watching NFL. Thank you. Just a wonderful sport. Since the European season is just getting rolling, unless it's a really big account, uh, Milan, for instance, uh, I usually don't choose in the film or soccer, whatever. Yeah, today a few more games. Um, I think the big one is uh, Italy, Poland, Poland, Italy. Um, so, looking forward to that on Saturday. I think I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna watch it, maybe I'll watch some of it. Um, of course, the big one is uh, Spain and England coming soon. That should be a nice game. And yeah, yeah, I also saw the other highlights I saw, of course, was Austria against Sweden. Uh, Sweden not playing with the full squad, so Austria got a relatively easy 2 nothing victory. Uh, but yeah, nothing to really write home about, to be honest. Um, it's. Uh, was an own goal and then a nice goal by Alaba. 2-0 for Austria. Uh, I hope they do well in Bosnia uh, early next week. That's gonna be... They are starting the Nations League. I have to say the Austrian group I'm not so excited about. Uh, Northern Ireland and Bosnia. Uh, I think the only connections I can find at least... I, I don't think there's any connection between Northern Ireland and Bosnia. Uh, let, let me know if there is, but from the Austrian perspective, Northern Ireland is an opponent we really do not like to play. We always play badly against Northern Ireland. We just, especially in Northern Ireland, we just cannot get a result. This is for me uh, one of those where I, I don't get it. Uh, but no, we never make good results against Northern Ireland. And the one, yeah, we have many Bosniaks in Austria, and Bosnia is surely. Uh, an opponent that's never nice to play. I mean, all those Balkan opponents, uh, they are on our level, but they're always unpleasant to play because they have just enough skill and they're pesky and whatever, and, and, 
atmosphere is almost assured to be against you. I honestly love the atmosphere there, but it's, you know, from an Aus if you are a supporter of Austria, you know going down there uh, to the Balkans, it's a tough going. And uh, that also is the nice thing about the Nations League. But yeah, the group is not exciting. I think almost all the other groups in League B are more, more and more exciting if I think about it. But yeah, we'll talk about those when I make juicy videos. Well, that's that. Um, let me know what games you watched, uh, what you thought about all of these. Um, share your experience with me. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked my rumblings here. I think it got a little bit too long. I agree with that. And yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I promise it's a little bit shorter. I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.